Welcome to the The Low Low Carb Carb Athlete Athlete Podcast, Podcast. where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey guys, it's your friend Debbie Potts talking to you again about how you can take this time to optimize your health from the inside out. And what I've been talking about for about 10 years is what I call the holistic method, working on transforming the whole you from the inside out. And that includes eight or so elements. So my eight elements of the holistic method, you should have memorized by now because I talk about it every episode, but we've got Eight elements, nothing in order, but they all impact the other, all right? So number one, you know nutrition. Low-carb athlete, we know about nutrition, anti-inflammatory diet. We've got exercise that we're talking about today. Sleep, which we've talked a lot about, and I have a great episode with Dr. Bruce coming out next week, the sleep doctor. We've got chronic stress, which I always talk about because external and hidden internal stressors is what I focus on doing in my health detective coaching program for others to help them avoid going through what I've had happen since 2013. And that's why I became a nutritional therapy practitioner and now an FDN practitioner. So we know about stress. We need to lab test and not guess about our hidden internal stressors as I just recently did and we'll talk about next week. All right, we've got movement which includes getting outside, daylight exposure, sunrise, sunset, working on getting fresh air, time in nature, it's healing, it's spiritual, it's therapeutic, and moving more instead of sitting in a chair all day is the other part. And then of course, digestion and gut health is huge, and that impacts everything. Start with the gut but we work north and work away south. So working on nutrition, how we're eating first. What we're eating, of course, impacts the gut health as well. So we're talking a lot about that lately because 80% of your immune system is in your gut. If your gut is damaged, which everybody's gut is damaged, guaranteed 99.9% that you have some level of leaky gut. So my focus on many of these episodes and my blogs that I keep writing every day is the importance of improving your gut health, which is reducing external and internal stressors because stress is on, the immune system is off. Secretary IgA, the kind of the first antibody, first line defense part of our immune system, defense system is basically turned off when stress is on chronically. So we really need to work on our gut health, but of course all these elements overlap. Hydration. We need to drink water and not drink excessive amounts of caffeine and alcohol right now. And drink more filtered non-tap water, sea salt, lemon. And then having green tea is really beneficial for your health, antioxidants, and turmeric. So further food, if you use the code LowCarbAthlete or the whole athlete, you both can use either one of those codes for 10% off further food because they have amazing turmeric tonic and matcha green tea mix with both have adaptogens which are good for stress and that's kind of what i've been drinking during the day watching my green tea intake because it's caffeine not having that too late in the day but hydration is key water 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 and then lastly happiness is the eighth element so today's focus on exercise and you might hear some noise because i'm going to flip my computer screen back and forth to talk about exercise first i want to talk about my routine I'm doing now. So since we're at home, I'm in Seattle, we have locked down or technically stay at home, stay healthy, isolation through May 4th, which I predict and expect, and it should be, through May, middle of May, because we're just starting to see kind of a start decline, but that's a whole nother subject. The whole country with this COVID-19 in the world is going to see a climax of how many deaths and spreading of the virus and it'll start to slow down. And we want to really keep focusing on 
social distancing, cleaning your hands, which everyone should be doing all the time. I don't know why this is suddenly uh, <laughs> new to people, but we should be cleaning, washing your hands and not touching your face anyways, and wiping down equipment, disinfecting everything. But that's kind of a gift from this as well, right? Like the new normal is going to be being more clean and hygienic. So anyways, we have a new routine. We're stuck at home, working at home. We can't go to the gym. And we're here through May, as I said. I expect through later in May and probably plan to stay away from the gym until then because I just don't trust people <laughs> because people don't know that they're not healthy on the inside. As I continue to talk about every episode, you have these hid, hidden internal stressors that are going to impact your immunity because chronic stressors that are inside like pathogens, H. pylori, bacteria overgrowth, those are going to impact your gut. Eating foods that you're sensitive to are going to impact your gut, even if they're healthy. If you're eating dairy and you're reactive to it, it might cause problems. You know, there's all these different things that contribute to, well, gut health, which is immune health and your goals to optimize your health. So we got to look at that whole picture. So working on staying healthy right now is essential. And I keep getting on tangents. I'm sorry. There's so much to talk about. And exercise is my focus. So let me, I haven't finished any <laughs> thoughts yet. So let's just stick with my notes so I don't go uh off on a zillion tangents, as you probably know I tend to do. So staying at home is what I'm doing. I closed my studio, thank gosh, in September. And I have some equipment at home, but you don't need to have a lot of equipment. You have your own body that's a weight. <laughs> I was actually, other weights, I was thinking of other weights you can use, like my book from Ben Greenfield, the the book Boundless is, I swear, five pounds, and you can use laundry detergent. I was gonna going to go buy uh, more laundry detergent today and walk to the store. It's like a mile walk to the drugstore, and um, I was thinking, ah, I really need some biceps. You're getting flabby. I could do bicep curls with the laundry detergent bin. So, you know, there's ways to keep your strength up. Now, if you haven't focused on strength training, this is a great opportunity to work on strength. Again, as I started to say, there's gifts in this pandemic of coronavirus. It's number one is to finally get serious about taking care of your health from the inside out. Even if you exercise, your gut health is actually probably just as bad as somebody else's because of chronic stress, oxidative stress of excess cardio and training and chronic stress is going to break you down from the inside out as it did to me. And the other gift in this is making time to slow down, be at home more, you know, wake up and exercise, but not waking up with an alarm and doing different exercises that I don't do at the gym. I have been lifting weights three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I was, you know, biking and running and swimming at lunchtime in the, the old schedule. But it's kind of nice to have this new routine at home. And my goal today is to talk about ways you can exercise without having a gym. And I find it's a great opportunity to get back to doing yoga. I used to teach yoga when I was learning yoga when I was in my 20s, 20 years ago. Dang, I'm getting old. I, um, you know, I'm turning 50 next year. I don't know how that's possible, but somehow in my 20s, which were suddenly now 25 years ago, I love doing yoga every night. And that's part of when I started to get my so-called adrenal exhaustion in 2013, I was burning the candle at both ends of the day because I would do yoga all the time, like five days a week. And that was on top of training at a competitive level for triathlons and teaching spin class and doing all this other stuff as a fitness trainer. But doing yoga is something I took out of my schedule the last eight years because I needed to not do so much in my day. So that got cut out because I'd be going to yoga at 5.30 at night, get home at 7.30, and that would be a little too much to do every day. So the gift right now is that, at one, I don't have to wake up with an alarm at 4.30. I don't have to be at the gym at 5.30. I don't have clients to get to at 7.15 in the morning, so I'm not rushed. I do have kind of my so-called work hours 
uh, starting at 8 or 8.30 in the morning and I stop work around 5 p.m. And then I take lunch break is going out for a walk and you know go work out. We'll talk about running and biking. But benefit is, is not having an alarm and waking up when you want to. It's so amazing. Love it. But I still wake up about 5.30, 5.45 in the morning. So I get up. When I wake up, Neil and I, my husband, we don't have kids, so it's a little bit easier probably than others to find this new schedule. I have us do yoga every other day, and I'm doing this April challenge. I put on my Facebook page, Low Carb Athlete. I'm posting the videos that I find on YouTube that are free that you can do at home. Now, we have a newer TV in our family room. Fortunately, we got wood floors put in here last fall, so I roll up our little square carpet and then I can put a yoga mat down for myself and a yoga mat for Neil and then we have the TV and it has YouTube on it on those smart TVs so we can have you know a 60 inch screen of yoga and have our Sonos speakers and have a great yoga practice. I put the essential oils on my diffuser, peppermint to kind of start the day. If it was evening I put lavender essential oil in there and I have the lights dimmed and doing yoga practice every other day. So my goal is to do it three times a week or my yoga challenge, I suggested having it three, three classes a week. So it's 15 total is the goal. So I'm just kind of posting on a Facebook page number, I think we're in number five. I did yesterday of 15 and we'll do yoga tomorrow because the alternative days I do a circuit training. Now I've been a personal trainer for, ugh, again, I, th I would say 25 years, but suddenly Let's see, it's been 28 years. And I closed my studio, as I've told you 100 times, in September. And I used to do circuit training all the time. So I kind of have it automatic ability to create a 30 minute workout. It is it's weird. I just plan kind of stations for us to do. And it ends up always being 30 minutes. So 30 minutes is plenty to work out over that an hour seems so long to me. So we like to do 30 minutes to 45 minutes circuit training. And I did write up the workout I did today. I put it on Facebook yesterday and I have just minimal equipment. So I will try my best. I'm horrible at doing videos and it's sunny here in Seattle the next week. So I will try to record some videos and put them on my YouTube channel. I don't really know how to edit on YouTube and I don't want to pay someone because I'm doing this for free. So I'm not uh, really editing my videos. So just bear with me on that and, you know, set your standards down a little lower. Just take the free info. <laughs> but I think a BOSU is something everyone should do. You know, those half dome, flat side on one side, dome on the other side. That's an amazing thing to invest in for home equipment. Bands that you can loop around. I took a picture on my Instagram and showed the hooks that we have on a wall that we actually built out when we moved here 12 years ago. Cause that used to be our cycling room. I used to have spin bikes and we do yoga in this room. And then we had the bands on the wall, which I never did any of that. Cause I would go work out outside or the gym. So now I'm using those hooks, just little, what are they called? S hooks. And then a carabiner type of hook with a band on. Now, since I closed my studio and I had an auction, I did keep some key items that I use for clients. Now I brought it all home. So it's my fitness equipment for at home for Neil and I, but I have the different bands that have the handles. I like the kind with the cover on top. So if the band snaps, it's not gonna fall in your face. So I have a light, medium, and heavy band. Stroops is a S-T-R-O-O-P-S. I got a little, it comes with an orange bag. And I got an idea fitness convention a few years ago, but it's amazing. You can hook it up low. We have three hooks, low, medium, and high. So if you want to build something out super inexpensive, you can, if you are a handyman, you can drill some of those into a wall board and hook it in. Make sure it's on a solid piece of wood, not your plywood or sorry. I'm so not a home worker <laughs> repair person, but not on the plaster board. Make sure it's in a solid piece of wood. And then you can hook the bands, the Stroops bands, you can put them at different heights. You can also uh, do them on the lower hook and do some stuff with the band hooked to your ankle and do some hip extension and kind of running in place, balancing and all this different stuff. So the Stroops band I use, 
and and then I have so rip trainer I kept two of those and two T-Rexes so I have not hooked the T-Rex up because I don't really know where to put it it could go outside when it's warmer or in the garage we have a, a balcony but I'm just afraid uh, you know if Neil's on there 200 pounds and I I'm a tall larger person that's not really lightweight <laughs> I'm afraid we're gonna just like rip the deck out so I, I need to figure out where to put a T-Rex but that's a great piece of equipment you can throw around a tree I don't have a solid oh I do have a tree out there but we'd have to stand kind of weird spot but if you could loop it around a tree you know the tree won't fall down unless it's a twig but T-Rex rip trainer bands what else oh ankle bands super expensive they're like five dollars and I put links a few weeks ago. If you go into the Low Carb Athlete Facebook page, you can see the Amazon pages I shared individually on my page, which has a thousand different posts because it's kind of my bookmark place for my research on self-care immune system research I've been doing. So you have to probably go back a ways to find the Amazon pages on BOSU, ankle bands, stroop bands, and a stability ball. I have a stability ball that the company Bosu does make. It has sand in it, so it doesn't roll away, but that's an excellent tool to keep in your house for your home gym. Push-up handles, remember those uh, infomercials of perfect push-ups? I have those that rotate. I have the wheel, that's like $10. You can buy the wheel. That always kills my core in a good way. Or you can just do the wheel type of thing on a ball with your elbows on a ball. So those are some just inexpensive pieces of equipment you can get. Now I did look up buying some free weights because I don't really want to go to the gym until maybe June and possibly canceling my membership because that's $300 a month that I thought, you know, if I'm not going to use it, I should cancel it. But then we like going to the gym and seeing our gym friends, so it's kind of a hard decision to make. But I miss doing other exercises you can't do with the weight without weights or doing pull-ups and stuff. So I looked at buying, like if you could buy the five, 10, 20, you know, a bunch of free weights costs a lot. Or getting kettlebells. There's medicine balls you can buy a bunch of that have different weights that I may order that, that I had a client order. There's a good kit on uh, Amazon of different medicine balls you can buy. Also the weight blocks that, remember I've seen these years ago, Bowflex and they have adjustable weights. So you just kind of put um, kind of a lock thing in and then you pull the weight out and it'll be that weight. And they're $850 on Amazon. So I'm not gonna buy that. If you're on a budget, you know, you gotta pick and choose what you wanna invest in in your home gym. So these basic pieces of equipment are great to have, but you also have your own body weight. You have stairs in your house, perhaps, stairs outside, there's ledges. There's like benches. If you don't have a real equipment, you can be creative and find stuff inside and outside of your house that you can use for weights and for props. Like the stairs. I did, you know, with a client, we're doing virtual training on Zoom and I, I had him use the stairs as like place to do a calf raise, single leg calf raise. We did lunges with your foot on there, step up to balance. We did, um, like reverse lunges that your foot's on the stair and you, you're going down and in place in a single leg lunge. There's lots of options. Body weight, of course, you all know about burpees and mountain climbers and squat jobs and speed skitters, all that stuff. But that's another conversation. Less is more right now. I don't suggest doing a lot of, well, ever, I do not suggest doing in too much high intensity interval training or too much, you know, that red zone heart rate, you need to do that twice a week. And some people shouldn't do any of it. If your adrenals, your hormones are totally out of whack, you don't want to add more stress by doing a stressful workout because your body won't be able to handle that. It will cause more damage than good. So you can listen to my podcast. I'm actually recording tomorrow with the doctors from the Dutch test the Dutch hormone panel that I use in my health coaching program that identifies all your hormones and circadian rhythm and uh, lots of other markers, oxidative stress and all that. But you really should not do 
a lot of high intensity training if you are already taxed, stressed out. Also, you should not be doing extended bike rides and runs, especially at a higher heart rate when you are stressed out. So if this coronavirus is freaking you out and you have high levels of anxiety and stress right now, don't go do a 10 mile run. I see a lot of people working out every day, doing these super long runs back to back. One, do that once a week. Two, just do 30, 45 minutes. More than an hour could be increasing your sources of stress, increasing that cortisol. So less is more right now. We have so much going on in our lives, this new schedule of your homeschooling kids, everyone's at home, your house is a stressful place. If you go outside and you're, you might be stressed having people you know, too close to you, and I say, if they say six feet, I want you 10 feet away from me. I'm gonna read this article too about working out with people because it's that your air that you're breathing, the exhaling, the droplets can get on you and that could be spreading the virus. So staying by yourself, working out with your spouse or whoever lives in your house, or be alone, don't have workout partners, even if you're six feet apart, I don't think that's safe. I say 10 feet apart, and how many people are really gonna stay 10 feet apart because you can't probably talk? So really, you know, look out for yourself. I know it's hard not to be with our, our training buddies. I miss my swimming friends. You know, we're gonna do a virtual call with our master swim group, but you know, running and, and biking is something you can still do, but try to do it alone or with your people that live with you. Luckily, my husband and I, he's like my other half and our relationship is amazing. It's actually gotten stronger, I think, being at home 24 seven and we you know, work out, we do our strength and our yoga together and we eat together. It's like, you know, it's gonna kill your relationship. I saw someone posted to this. It's gonna create a divorce, a lot of divorces or improve your relationship. And for me, it's making us stronger because we're around each other the right amount and supportive. So working out, strength training, strength is important, especially if you're aging, especially if you're female and a female athlete. We need to balance muscle building with muscle breakdown. So everything in your body needs to be in balance. Every cell, every function, the body has its own innate intelligence. And we have to find that Goldilocks effect, not too much, not too little, to create that good, hormetic response. We want that positive effect so we get stronger. But if you do too much cardio and barely strength training or little to no strength training, that's the same thing, no strength training or just minimal strength training, an excessive amount of cardio, you should be a little bit more cautious about your, your balance of the two. Catabolic, anabolic, balance it out. Also having more protein, you know, if you listen to my podcast with Kelsey Hess and then Krista Flanagan, we talked about women and athletes as well, female athletes and uh, fasting and keto and, you know, looking at the importance if you read Dr. Stacey Sims' book, Roar, that women need more protein, especially during our hormone phases. Well, I think we always need it, especially when you're on your cycle, you are losing TMI for men, sorry, blood. You need to have, you're losing iron, so we need more red meat. And then we need more protein because our high hormone phase, the second half of your cycle, your body needs a little bit more protein. And when you're exercising, we need more protein too. So you can read about Dr. Stacy Sims' book or listen to my podcast. We talked about it a couple times and Kelsey and I are doing a follow-up next week on female athletes and nutritional therapy, but really five to seven grams of amino branch chain amino acid. So I use Keon aminos before workouts. I use the capsules and then post-workout, women 30 minutes, men can go two hours and have protein afterwards. So branch chain amino acids, Dr. Stacey Sims talks about leucine, the amino acid to get that for sure in and having bone broth is great for that too but having my amino acids twice before and after workouts and even another time as I'm getting premenopausal and I need to have even more 
protein to get my amino acids and any digestive enzymes because I'm eating protein, but I'm not breaking it down because my lab test shows me my endocrine levels are high. And so that means I'm not breaking down my protein. You can't break down protein. You don't get your amino acids. You don't get your amino acids. You don't get your muscle repair and recovery. Plus you don't build those neurotransmitters as amino acids are cofactors in there as well as everything else. <sighs> Breathe. So nutrition is important, getting our protein, but going back, we need that balance of strength training and cardio. So point is run, walk, or run, 45 minutes, plenty of time. Bike rides, if you can get outside, some countries you can't work out more than once a day outside for 30 minutes, so that's a little bit more of a challenge. You, I know a lot of people are riding a bike. I don't like riding inside. Fortunately, we're allowed to go outside. I sold my bike trainer because I hate riding on a bike trainer, and I go outside because I can, and now that it's springtime, it's a little easier, but we're able to go at nighttime, so after work, Tuesday, Thursdays, and then Saturday, short ride, a little longer Sunday, depending on which day is a better weather day, we ride outside, just an hour, 15 minutes at night, and keep the heart rate down, and I'm good. Running, I'll do in the morning after my workout, and I'm just doing three to five miles. Weekends, we'll do our so-called longer run. I'm in a, a health building program right now, and for myself, doing a protocol that I'm working on my gut healing repair and my H. pylori I found out I still have, so I'm kind of keeping my mileage down because it was just junk miles anyways when I was trying to go longer, and it was stupid because it was not fast, and there's no benefit to it, so I'm just keeping my long runs. I did seven miles last Sunday, and I'll, I might do eight miles this weekend, but that's max. I'm not going to go over that because I can't, but that's my body. I'm trying to heal it and focus on getting rid of my hidden internal stressors are causing my total health breakdown from the inside out and my mitochondria dysfunction because of oxidative stress is going to impact your mitochondria and so on as we have the domino effect. So strength training, I'll write out ideas and I, I, I'll try my best to do videos on my low carb athlete Facebook and Instagram page. So remember less is more as we don't want to add more stress to our body and activate the stress hormone cortisol and have this overfilling of our beaker of stress. Remember that stress cup, you only can handle so much and it's like a flood. If there's a flood coming through, we can't stop that flood and the dam will break. And the other analogy I always use is like a, a faucet it's supposed to turn on, turn off, exercise, high stress, turn it off, turn it on. You know, acute stress, hormetic stress is supposed to be on and off, not start it in the morning and don't turn it off until nighttime. <laughs> so then you'll have sleep problems and have a whole nother load of problems. So I put some article links on the show notes here, DNA fit that I've done with genetics, have my clients do. You can upload your raw data from 23andMe to find out more, but you can learn about your genetics on there. The article, I put was talking about exercise and if it's good for you. And it's talking about, you know, what you can do to maintain healthy cortisol levels with training. Some tips they said in this blog I found was, of course, is extra benefits every one talks about. But for us, our listeners, most of you are like me, and then we like to do more. More is better. We're overachievers, we're competing, you're training for races that are all probably on hold and you're trying to make up for it doing a little bit more training or maybe a more free time and you're overtraining, over exercising and under recovery. So you have to make sure you get the right amount of exercise. So the benefits of exercise you wanna do without having the impact of cortisol concentrations be raised you don't want to overdo it. They said, take some regular breaks from intense training and listen to your body, as I already said. Number two, leave intense sessions to later in the day when cortisol levels are lower. Now, if you look at your circadian rhythm and your chronotype with what I did with Ben Greenfield in our coaching program, Keon and Dr. Bruce, the chronotype at the power of when, 
you don't want to work out hard later in the day. If you've noticed, if like if I work out at 6 p.m. and did a hard workout, my sleep is screwed up for that night. So try to do like 3 to 5 p.m. if you're going to do more intense workout, but don't do it close to bedtime. Number three, eat right for your right to fuel your body and make sure you consume the right type of carbohydrates and protein after exercise to decrease the cortisol response. In DNA Fit Report, you can tell a little bit more about your nutrition and exercise needs based on your genetic profile. The next one is consider adaptogens to improve your body's response to stress. And I already said earlier, the further food, I'm gonna write that down, put in my links. Further food has a 10% discount. If you go to furtherfood.com, I think is their website. And that turmeric tonic has great adaptogens in it as well as the green tea, the matcha green tea. And they have adrenal adaptogen supplement I've been taking as well. I have other adaptogens I take from bio botanicals that are really good as well. Uh, so they have some great information on DNA fit and what cortisol does, the positive role of cortisol in your body. Of course, nothing is bad. It's just too much of anything is not good and too little of it's not good either because our cortisol helps us deal with a stressor and will raise your glucose levels when you're stressed and cortisol helps the body to respond to that emergency and raises that blood sugar level to make sure you can run from that lion and escape that threat emergency. But it also works on, you know, your immune system helping control inflammation and infection. So it's an anti-inflammatory effect and helps irritation and pain and illnesses, but we have to make sure it is not overloaded. And the negative effect of too much cortisol can be chronic, causes negative effects as tissue breakdown, reduced protein synthesis, and conversion of protein to glucose can decrease musculature and increase abdominal fat. You have more cortisol receptors in your belly fat, so that's why people usually with high cortisol get more of that belly fat problem. So it's not ideal. And too much cortisol suppresses the level of your growth hormone and sex hormones as DHEA and all your other hormones as mine are all low can reduce libido and fertility, which I never could get pregnant when I was racing for many years because my hormones, I never got tested properly because the regular doctors don't test our lab work as detailed as we need it. So I was not aware of how hormonally dysfunctional I was, plus everything else. So too much cortisol lessens your glucose usage and increases blood cells, blood levels, potentially predisposing to diabetes and its effect on calcium, which can increase osteoporosis. So moderating cortisol levels is important for maintaining health and well-being. So we want to be careful in what we're doing. So how does cortisol help us and how can we take it as a benefit and not be afraid to exercise? Because as I said, some cortisol is good, not cor cortisol isn't bad. So exercise, stress, and cortisol levels in this article had some great pointers. Exercise is perceived by the body as a form of stress and stimulates the release of cortisol. In general, the more your fitness improves, the better the body becomes at dealing with physical stress. This means that less cortisol will be released during exercise and also in response to emotional or psychology, psychology, psychological stressors as we have a lot of right now. So in this, some research that they're showing DNA fit shows that the time and intensity of exercise can affect the level of cortisol release. When it comes to exercise, more may not be better. Ha ha, do I not say that all the time? More is not better. Training for more than 60 minutes, even at low intensity, will burn up the body's glycogen stores and stimulate cortisol release. Now, 
I must add in, we often focus on optimizing our fat burning capacity and we're not necessarily using our glycogen stores up unless you're training too high of heart rate. So if you're staying in the max aerobic function maffetone type of training and you're metabolically efficient and flexible, you should be burning higher percentage of fat and you're always burning some carbohydrates. There's not 0% of carbs being burned when you exercise, but there's higher percentage of fat you're burning. So you may not deplete your muscles, your body's glycogen stores in your muscles, but you will deplete them at some level. So we have to take that into account. But a study they also talk about confirms that long-term cortisol exposure was significantly higher in endurance athletes, which is my story and what I tried to dive deep into my book on Amazon called Life Is Not A Race. Hopefully you ordered that and uh, are reading that while you have some time at home. You can catch up on reading. And my manual and workbook is on there as well. Look for Debbie Potts on Amazon, The Holistic Method. So short, high intensity exercise, a sprints, hit training, and even weight training can cause less of an increase in plasma cortisol concentrations. But you don't want to do that every day, right? We need to work hard, recover, recover, work hard. So you have to alternate hard, easy, easy workout, or else you're not recovering or repairing in between sessions. The levels of surge, they say in this article, if rest periods are short and work levels are high, which is why I'll add to this article that I really suggest using a heart rate monitor. Especially the more fit you get, the harder it is to increase your heart rate. So I know I have a trouble, trouble, I struggle to get my heart rate up where I need to, to do a HIIT training up to 160, 170 heart rate. I work better doing my HIIT training running because it easily goes up high when I run. That's part of my problem right now. I can't keep it down. And that's my mitochondria dysfunction and related to my pathogen, H. pylori, that I think is causing that internal stress and inflammation and stressing out my mitochondria. Anyways, that's about me. So you should make sure you find, if you are wearing a heart rate monitor, how you can go 160, 170, or whatever your top you know, anaerobic threshold and higher heart rate is. And then use a heart rate monitor to push yourself to get up there. And then you do more rest-based recovery that you don't start your next interval until say you come down to 130. So that's my heart rate as an example, but I'll try to go 160 or higher and then walk, jog, whatever, get down to 130 before I start the next interval. So if you're doing that with a HIIT training, I find the more fit you are, it's harder to really get my heart rate up to get the benefit of HIIT training. So if you're doing short, high intensity intervals, high intensity interval training is HIIT, it, I, I'm kind of always not quite there. So if you're like me, you're better off using heart rate monitor, make sure you're working hard enough to get the benefits of HIIT, the hormetic stress interval training. So the article also says, doing HIIT training or the short periods of high intensity and then low for recovery, it helps if you, significant if exercising when starved or nutritionally depleted and was also increased by training in the early morning when cortisol levels are naturally higher and the response to exercise can be more. So fasted morning workouts might be more beneficial which I can't eat and work out. So I don't know how people can eat a meal and then work out, but that is bio-individuality. I, I prefer for myself to not have anything before my workouts or else I'd be burping and uh, regurgitating what I just ate, unless you ate like three hours beforehand, especially running, even biking, but running and swimming, I really can't eat bef too close before a workout. That's why Vespa or you can is good for longer workouts. So another article I want to go over is something I found in this research article on why long 
cardio workouts don't lead to sustained weight loss or i rather change the word to fat loss because we're not trying to lose weight, we're trying to lose fat weight. So not fat loss, I mean not weight loss, we should be saying fat loss. All right, so this article I'll put in the show notes showing research that extended moderate exercise resulting in diminished returns of fitness and weight loss. So how to avoid the cardio trap and keep your workouts more effective is what we've been talking about for a long time. We talked about with Ben Greenfield in our Keon program and how we coach people as an option if you're busy, high-performing individual already that most of our lives are already packed. Us, more of a minimalist approach to training, especially for Ironman endurance races, less is more, and then time when you do your longer workouts because doing what I used to do, 20 hours a week of training is not something you should be, you know, bragging about. I think it's, to me, when people talk about how much they worked out and they did 20 plus hours of exercise cardio, to me, that means, all right, you are probably breaking down your body, your hormones, your liver, your mitochondria, gut health. You are creating damage in the domino effect of breakdown from the inside out less is more. So how do we make our workouts more efficient? What this article talks about, you know, doing that long cardio, you guys are athletes, you're not doing the elliptical, as you see a lot of people doing an hour a day, and it's not really beneficial to lose weight. I found this out when I was doing Ironmans every year, and that was marathons and Ironmans of 50K runs. I did all in one year. I'd train, like race every month, doing something, some event that I was not losing weight. I remember seeing Dr. Jeff Lakoven, a friend of mine, is a naturopath, and I was doing Ironmans and I was still fat, right? How many people are over fat and fit but fat? And my body was used to doing Ironman. It wasn't any big shocker to my body when I would swim, bike, run in you know, peak race season and training at those high levels was not causing me to lose fat weight. Probably had a lot of hormonal imbalances and I didn't know about doing the Dutch tests back then and doing pathogen tests as I know now. But the higher interval, higher intensity interval training has shown to be more beneficial to your cardio fitness levels rather than doing, you know, the chronic cardio. So doing fewer repetitions during HIIT workouts may get more bang for your buck, as I'd say, fitness benefits than those do longer workout. And it says, over time, our bodies adapt to repetitive aerobic exercise using oxygen and energy more efficiently and thereby hindering fat loss. Endurance cardio has also been linked to an increase in the body's production of the stress hormone cortisol. If cortisol levels remain raised over time, our bodies become more sensitive to insulin and store fat, particularly in the abdominal area. And they say serotonin, thyroid function, growth hormone, testosterone, and estrogen levels are disrupted. Hello, you can get all those tested on the Dutch panel. The Dutch complete test tells you about your neurotransmitters, not so much your thyroid, but it will give you indication that you should get a full thyroid panel. Your doctor does not do a full thyroid panel. Even if you ask, you have to order it online and get it done yourself through a practitioner. But anyways, growth hormone, testosterone, estrogens, mine were all super low, my estrogens, and my testosterone was good, but DHEA, my melatonin, my oxidative stress, my B12, all of that was all super low on the recent Dutch test I just did, my metabolic assessment test I just did, my protein digestion, my oxidative stress was high, protein was plus two, so it's really poor protein digestion, and liver congestion was okay, but I also had my gut biome test done from microbiome labs and waiting to go over with them, and then my pathogen test showed I still had, as I said, H. pylori, which is hiding in your stomach lining of your stomach organ going to cause dysfunction in that protein. So you can kind of understand and start to see how we collect different clues to 
your imbalances and dysfunctions, I mean, health complaints or concerns with lab testing. But this exercise is a big part of it. So you don't know unless what's going on with these serotonin levels, your growth hormone, estrogen, testosterone, unless you dust and your DHEA, progesterone. So anyways, the article says, pushing yourself without placing your body in a prolonged state of stress is key. Food choices, of course, we always talk about what you're working and avoid overeating, which is a stress to your system too when you overeat and binge. Uh, variation in routine, I say muscle confusion, is important too as well to get the benefits because if you do the same art exercises over and over again, even high intensity intervals, heavy lifting, you know, your body gets used to all that, it adapts. So we need to always mix it up and create that muscle confusion to get the maximum benefits. So you'll notice if someone's new, they'll get this, you know, more weight loss and body will change, but then after a while they get diminished returns. So again, muscle confusion, shock the system doing different things. So doing steady state cardio workouts all the time if you notice people at the gym, I would lift weights, you know, as I said, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you see people lifting, or while I'm lifting, I see them on the cardio machines every day for years, and they're still fat and out of shape looking. No offense, but they have not changed their body because they're not really understanding what health means, and that's all the eight elements of the holistic method. So steady state cardio, those people that do an hour on the cardio machines or you go run every day, you go long bike rides, whatever you do, it's not necessarily what you need to change. Plus, as we get older, our hormones change, the more important it is to do weights and lift heavy, not machines, but lift heavy things. You know, work on that strength training. So doing more weights, and one or two high intensity interval trainings that is like 20, 30 minutes. Your workouts when you're doing strength should not be an hour. I know some people that do bodybuilding, they're in the gym for two hours, but that's if you're competing for bodybuilding, you don't need to waste all their time. So Tabata training you've heard of should be, it's eight sets of something, 20 seconds. It should be all out, like go up to that red zone, 170 heart rate, whatever your max anaerobic threshold heart rate is or higher and then you have a 10 second break. You do that over and over again, the same thing, like squat jumps or burpees or the rowing machine, I like that skier erg machine, and do something that drives that heart rate up and then you recover, that's Tabata. We kind of have blown that out of proportion of what it's supposed to be. Originally, Mr. Tabata it was supposed to be HIIT training, not just everything Tabata and do it for an hour that we do in the fitness industry kind of ruined it. But lift heavy objects, as I said, so even as article talks about lifting heavy weights, get stronger, you increase, increase that lean body mass, not sitting on the machines, you wanna just, you know, carry the laundry detergent, carry Ben Greenfield's new book that weighs a ton, it's humongous. And mix up the tempo, mix up the weight, the reps, like we did 30 second intervals, three rounds today, or I did Tabata the other day, as a timer, not a real Tabata hit training, but just 20 seconds of a push-up, rest 10 and do that, eight sets of push-ups, stuff like that. I also will do like five sets of five or 12, 10, eight or 10, eight, six and mix it up. So reducing stress is our main thing we're trying to work on right now, right? We need external stressors to be reduced. You can control a lot of them. That's what you eat. That's a stress. Overeating, eating a stressed manner, that is a stress. Environmental toxins, you know, your mold in your house, all those things that toxins on our food. If you don't buy organic food, you're getting glyphosate and everything that's related to most every disease. So we really need to take care of the whole person right now. Environmental toxins. Listen to my podcast with Karan of Microbiome Labs. He's an expert in endotoxins and all these environmental triggers that will basically create inflammation in your body and autoimmune disorders. So there's whoops, great interviews and webinars with him on YouTube, and I posted some of those on my page. So stress is internal and external. So right now, over exercising isn't something I would do. Lifting more weights right now, you can do at home, going for walks, morning, afternoon, evening, making those a run, 
three days a week. You know, if you run, if you don't run, you can walk four minutes, run a minute and work on that. And a bike riding, but keeping that heart rate in that math zone, that max aerobic zone. So let me know your thoughts as we continue down this coronavirus pandemic and staying at home for another month. I strongly stress for you to join my mission to help create awareness of self-care with what I call the holistic method, these eight elements we need to work on. And it's so essential right now for people to do this. I don't understand <laughs> why there's so much confusion, but it's because the media doesn't teach us this. It tells you to stay at home and we're told to wash your hands, wash your face, but no one's telling you to eat real food. What do people buy in the grocery stores to stock up for the next month? Crap, processed foods that just causes more gut dysfunction, inflammation, and lowers your immune system. Oh, I get so mad. And if we focus on what we eat, intermittent fasting, so it allows your body to digest your food and break it down, give your body time to have that liver detoxification process, give your body more healing, nurturing foods for the microbiome, for the mucosal barrier. We need to do all this now. I put some many blogs on my website, debbiepotts.net, on how to improve your secretary IGA levels, how to work on your mucosal barrier repair with microbiome labs, how we can get the right nutrients in our body. So please help me create awareness of what health is. What is self-care about? If you want to build your immune system, you want to build resiliency, and you want to fight the coronavirus, it doesn't just happen by staying at home and staying 10 feet or six feet away, is what they say, six feet away from each other. Wearing a face mask, wearing gloves, that's part of it. Washing your hands, wash, not touching your face, keeping your clothes clean, you know, doing all that stuff. But we have to work on our nutrition and exercise and sleep and stress and all these external and hidden internal stressors that are creating low immune system function. So if you want to improve your resiliency, we need to work on gut health. And that is all those external stressors and what we eat and how we eat. So what can we do? We have to just start with taking care of ourselves first. Prioritize you and your health and making time for your wellness, which I already know you do because you're listening to this podcast. But how do we help our family and our friends, our coworkers, our community understand this mission? Because I believe so many people would not be dying from coronavirus if they had a better immune system. Why is their immune system so weak? Because they're eating crap and they're breathing in toxins and they're eating food covering glyphosate. They don't get outside, their vitamin D levels are low, they don't take any supplements, they have prescription drugs. They follow the food pyramid that we were taught, political nutrition for the last 50 years and scared of eating real natural fat, scared of having grass fed protein, they're eating all that crappy meats and the processed foods and all the stuff that our food industry has given us and the medications and that the, the doctors give you that, you know, you listen to my interview I just did on, you know, statin drugs, how that damages your mitochondria. And so all these people, we, we can't necessarily trust our doctors, our traditional doctors who are trained just to put a bandaid on something with medication, prescription drugs. We need to self-educate and learn how to self-care, self-treat. So you can get more information on my website, debbiepotts.net. I do health coaching, as you know, the functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and nutritional therapy work I combine with genetics, with looking at your DNA fit and your strategy and reports and figuring out a protocol for you to optimize your health, to teach you to be a fat burner, to work on optimizing your mitochondria function, which improves our energy, our longevity, and our ability to build resiliency against these viruses and pathogens that will continue to knock us down. 
But if you want to avoid being knocked down with the virus, coronavirus, which is going to keep coming back and, you know, China didn't close those. You got to look at where it started in China and that market with live animals that people eat over there. They still have those markets open and that virus next one will come along. So we have to be prepared. Only thing you can do is to prepare your own body and build your own resiliency. Your immune system, your gut has your self-defense, first line of defense in it. So you have to build your own army, your National Guard, your Navy SEALs. Those are inside of you. You have to build up your defense team. That's up to you. The government, the recommendations we're given, are not providing that information. You can take all the supplements you want, but if you have leaky gut, which we said most people do, if you have dysbiosis, pathogens, and bacteria overgrowth, it is hard to really get it to work. As <laughs> Dr. Stephen in our podcast, I posted uh, the video version, you know, he gave a good example. If you have five nails in your bottom of your foot and you took one nail out, you're still going to have pain. So we need to work on identifying all your hidden internal stressors that are contributing to your chaos, metabolic chaos, Reed Davis says, and figure out how to repair your gut by eliminating the contributors to dysfunction. So I'll get off my soapbox and get on with my day, but I just wanted to bring you this information that was supposed to be just about exercise and routine, but I got on a tangent as I normally do. But just start working out, lift weights, watch my videos on YouTube. You have to ask me to do them because I won't do them unless you ask. So I uh, will do what I can, 20, 30 second clips of some things if you need ideas. But just send me a message on the Low Carb Athlete Facebook or Instagram page. Give me a shout out and you can look more and read more on debbiepotts.net. So go out, get some sunshine. Walk around the block and breathe in that nice fresh air and take some clothes off so you get some vitamin D on your skin. All right, go out and play. Thanks for listening and thanks for sharing the podcast and let me know if you could give me a review on iTunes and we can get this message out to the world. Au revoir. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.